All right, so here it is. It's time for my review of Cinema 4D 12. Much anticipated. Um, I'm surprised at how many people watched my last reviews. Uh, so here it is, this one. Um, it's a little bit late. I haven't gotten around to doing it, but now uh, that the holidays have come and gone, uh, and I'm a little bit less busy, uh, I had time to sit down and play with the new version of Cinema 4D, and I'm going to tell you what I think of it. So... Uh, let's go through what it has. This is going to be a short one. Uh, basically, they've done a few things. Um, one of them is they've added a dynamics module uh, or changed the dynamics module. And now it's kind of based on what they did uh, in the last version uh, with what they called Mo Dynamics, except now they've added all kinds of other tools. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how it works, and I'm going to do it by uh, creating a soft body this time. Um, another thing you'll notice while I'm doing it is they've actually changed the unit system. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it. Suffice it to say, it's much better. The old one sucked. The new one is good. Um, if you are using 11.5, I recommend getting it just because the units now are uh, proper units. Okay, so here we have a sphere. Uh, the sphere is 0.5 meters. It's uh, a little bit off the ground. Uh, and I'm going to add some dynamics to it. Uh, they've got really easy presets, uh, basically, for all the different kind of dynamics that you'd want. Uh, they've reorganized the menu so that they're a lot better, too. But here it is. I'm going to create a, a soft body. Uh, I'm going to take the plane. Uh, I'm going to go into dynamics. I'm going to create a collider. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the play button. And that is that. The soft body is working as you'd expect it to. Um, under the soft body tag here, uh, I can make all the adjustments that I want to make uh, in terms of how the soft body performs uh, in order to uh, basically uh, change the behavior. So if uh, I wanted to have a little more structural strength, uh, I can do that. Um, We'll see, it's a little bit slow on this machine, quite honestly, but um, this is not a great machine that I'm running it on. I'm running it on a pretty consumer version of the iMac, so um, and it still plays in pretty much real time. This is about the same speed as you get out of the cloth system, which is a really good cloth system, so uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the other thing that's really nice about this, if you listen to my uh, last review, is that uh, you know, what I thought was a disappointment in the Mo Dynamics system was its lack of support in Expresso. Uh, the new system here uh, actually has full support in Expresso. Hang on, I'm just trying to find something. Ah, oh, nulls are there now, okay. Uh, so if I add an Expresso tag and open up an Expresso window and we go into nodes, you can see under Dynamics, General, we have Body State, Collision, and Proximity. Uh, this is great stuff because uh, now it allows us to trigger, um, you know, whatever we want. New dynamic simulations based on uh, collision, uh, particle emission based on collision, um, any kind of triggering events we want to have. We can have things mixed together uh, in tons of new ways because of this, and that wasn't available before. So kudos to them for adding that because uh, I thought it was the big weakness in the dynamic system before, and it's been rectified. So, good stuff. Um, what else have they added? Well, uh, I can quickly show you a couple of those things, and then we will be done. One of the things that they've added, first off, is linear workflow, which you see right here. You can turn it on or you can turn it off. Uh, and you can see, uh, based on uh, here, the input color profile, a hint as to what linear workflow is. So, I will quickly explain it. Um, Linear workflow is basically just uh, the uh, compensation for the gamma of the screen that you're looking at. So uh, all screens basically have a gamma of 2.2. The reason they have that is to make the images look better. Um, it, they're really just trying to compensate for the limitations of the images, of the ability of a screen to display uh, a full range of color as captured by the human eye or film. Uh, so linear workflow... Um, is trying to compensate for that because inside Cinema 4D it's a complete uh, physically based linear environment uh, which means that it calculates uh, colors uh, on a linear gamma curve um, 
as opposed to um, the gamma curve of 2.2 that you get um, in the monitor in your um, operating system everywhere else. So the effect you're going to see of that basically is that uh, the distribution of light in your scenes is going to seem a lot more natural. Uh, it's basically one button workflow. So uh, even though the images, say bitmaps that you're using as textures that you bring into Cinema 4D uh, are going to have uh, gamma compensation in them, um, uh, Cinema 4D is basically going to look at that. It's going to correct for it. Uh, everything's going to be the right kind of color and uh, every all your images are essentially going to look more realistic because the distribution is, of light is better. Um, so it's a nice addition. Uh, they've done it really well because they made it as simple as it can possibly be. And uh, uh, that is about all there is to it. Um, what else have they added? Oh yeah, Python. Uh, this is something that may not seem like a big deal, but it actually is. Uh, Python is uh, a very good, simple language. Um, it's something that I'm sort of delving into now because it's uh, in so many different programs. Uh, Python scripting has basically become the standard of scripting for uh, most things in graphics and animation. So uh, it's great that um, Cinema 4D supports it because it's going to allow more people uh, to script inside Cinema 4D. Um, doo -doo -doo. And that is about that for the new stuff of Note. Um, so uh, the main question remains, okay, what, what do you get? Do you get Cinema 4D or do you get something else? Um, I would say if you're doing motion graphics, uh, Cinema 4D is at this point a must have. It's the standard in that business. If you're using anything else to do motion graphics, you're probably um, adding to the time and difficulty of creating anything you're trying to create. And uh, as a design environment, I've said it before, um, for 3D stuff, Cinema 4D is the best there is. Um, that said, if you're doing something else, there's probably a better choice out there. If you're into modeling, uh, architectural visualization, uh, things like that where the animation is more limited, Modo is about a third of the price of Cinema 4D and is as good at almost everything uh, and is a much better modeler. Uh, if you are going into film visual effects, um, then Maya is the standard in that business and you should be learning it. If you are looking at games, then it's either Maya or uh, 3DS Max, which is uh, the two kind of gorillas in that market. Uh, nothing's ever taking those out. Um, and in terms of bang for the buck, and the, the best application you can get right now is Softimage. There's nothing that has its range of tools. There's nothing that has its quality of tools, particularly at the price point of Softimage right now. It's an amazing deal. Uh, if you're an independent professional who does commercial work or you're more effects-based than motion graphics-based, then uh, Softimage is what you should uh, seriously consider at the very least because it does some amazing stuff. So that's about it for my review. I think for existing users who are getting the whole use out of the toolkit of Cinema 4D, um, you should definitely be upgrading. And uh, for other people that are using kind of the more limited scope of the tools in Cinema 4D, or who are maybe looking at specific kinds of career choices, well then, you know, maybe you should be looking at something else. But all in all, it's a very solid program, still doing solid stuff, and it's a pretty good upgrade.